There are many employees who want to work for a leader who has high expectations and believes in them. Would you agree? Yeah. People generally don't come to work hoping to mess things up, unless they're a sociopath. Right? That doesn't generally work. People come to us, they come to work in your organization with high hopes to do something different, to do something better. Nobody really wants just another job. It's up to you as leaders to retain that zeal, retain that enthusiasm. Now, I want to give you an example. Right outside of D.C., so we live right outside of D.C. in Maryland, a town called Bowie, Maryland in Prince George's County. Do, you, do any of you know Prince George's? You know that place? You do? Okay. One person. So there are two McDonald's in our, in our town. There's a McDonald's, there's a McDonald's maybe five to seven minutes from our house. And there's another McDonald's on the same street in the same neighborhood. But it's like maybe 15 more minutes. Right, can you picture what I'm talking about so far? Two McDonald's, same street, same neighborhood. The McDonald's, when you walk in, the, man, the staff, they're so hospitable. If they're outside and they're on break, they stop and they open the door for you. They like you. You come in, you, if you order food, you sit down, they bring the food to your table. It's very, very nice. And me being a service geek, I'm, I, I love to study excellence. So I decided to ask the manager, how do you get your team to be so consistently exceptional? It's one thing to be exceptional, it's another to be consistently exceptional. If you're only exceptional every now and then, then, then it's a fluke. It doesn't count. If I come to your organization on a Friday at 5 p.m. and it's awesome, then I come back on a Tuesday at 11 a.m. and it's so-so, it's a fluke. If it's not sustained, it doesn't count. So I said, how do you get your team in a fast food restaurant to be so awesome all the time? The lady, the, the manager said to me, well, I believe in my team. I work alongside them. I push them. I challenge them. All the stuff you've been hearing from yesterday morning to today, you've learned all this stuff, right? Simple. Now you go down to the other McDonald's. Before you even walk into the other McDonald's, you can feel the energy emanating out of the walls. And here's the energy. I hate my job. I hate you. <laughs> Isn't it lunchtime yet? Mm, customers. You want to give us money. So I decided to go talk to the manager. I'm like, what's up with your team? They look like they don't like humans. <laughs> and the manager said something to me that I want you to write down. In fact, my daughter and I, the seven-year-old, we have a thing called, whenever we're eating something crispy, right? If it's crispy and it's a hash brown or chicken or whatever, we call it the crispy part, which means it's a good part. So whenever you hear me say the crispy part, I'm talking about the? The good part. That's the part to write down, you know? So here's the crispy part. He said to me, we just can't find good people. You get that? We just can't find good people. And by the way, all of our staff, they're all young people. They're millennials. <laughs> Evil millennials. <laughs> this younger generation, they don't work hard. And <laughs> nonsense, isn't it? Complete nonsense, isn't it? Listen, you have two McDonald's on the same street, in the same neighborhood, which means they're hiring from the same... Hey, same labor pool, same socioeconomic status, same demographics, same business, same standards. You have to go to McDonald's University to be a manager. So the only thing different is what? The manager, specifically the expectations of the manager. The expectations, the consistently communicated expectations is what you will see on your team. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Don't ever waver or dilute your expectations, ever, because you compromise your credibility as a leader. And if you're not respected as a leader, nobody's going to follow you, right? Don't think you're doing anyone any favors by lowering your expectations for some people. Keep your expectations consistently high. In fact, I will say that no one should be on your team who you don't believe in. If you are on my team and I don't believe in you, you already know it. I don't have to say, I don't believe in you. It's obvious by how I, I don't give you feedback, I don't coach you, I allow you to come late every day, I, I don't say anything. You see? So I want to talk with you quickly about three levels of employees you have on your team. Are you ready? 